Well, happy Monday to you. I apologize that uh, last week there was no video to watch, and I thank David Richardson uh, for reminding me a couple of times last week that uh, no video was, was to be found. So I'll put that right this week, and we'll certainly start our week as we should. And uh, very, very soon, friends, I'm hoping that, um, that once I get back from uh, uh, the little vacation that we have, that we can start meeting again in our, in our corridors three times a week as we had done before. But nonetheless, today we're gonna to use this medium again. And the word I want to talk about today is the word blessing, the word blessing, or to be blessed. Uh, we use that word a lot. We band it around all the time so we as Christians. It's one of those go-to words. If something good happens, oh, I've been blessed. I've been blessed by a promotion at work. I've been blessed because I've been able to afford a nice new house or a nice new car. And indeed, that, that, that mentality lends itself very well to a number of of churches that promote or preach what they call the prosperity gospel. And all that is, it's the idea of God wants to make this world easier for us. He wants to make it comfortable. He wants to make it so that, 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 that we do well. Therefore, blessings uh, fall in line with this idea of an easy life. That's really what I've heard people talk about blessings being. What I don't see them talking about blessings being are what Jesus considers blessings. I know you've all read the Sermon on the Mount. It's very countercultural, very opposite of what we think. In Luke it says, or Jesus says, when preaching to the, the multitude, not blessed are the wealthy, that's not what it is. It says, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger. We consider starvation as a horrible thing, but blessed are you who hunger, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, or blessed are you who mourn. We pray all the time for people to get better, and yet here we're seeing something quite different. Blessed are people, oh, excuse me, blessed are you when people hate you. When they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. We desire for uh, we as the church to be honored and lauded by the world. But no, it says here, blessed are you when people hate you. That flies in the face, to, surely, of everything that we say is a blessing. I've never said, man, I'm struggling for money. I've got no money. I feel blessed. I've never gone around and said, boy, I'm starving hungry. I don't know where my next meal's coming from. I feel blessed. But that's what Jesus is saying. And it's sort of an interesting thing and perhaps a hard one to understand in a lot of ways. I've read a number of books. In fact, I'm reading one right now that talks about the, the Sermon on the Mount, in particular, this area where Jesus is talking about blessings. But I think the portion of Scripture I've read the best, excuse me, the version of the Bible that I've read that explains this best, is the message. So what I want to do right now is to read to you uh, Matthew's account of this Sermon on the Mount through the message uh, version of the Bible. And this is what it says. You are blessed when you are at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel that you've lost what is most dear to you, only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that cannot be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you will ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you'll find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside will, that is your mind and your heart, put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of to compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. 
the persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. And not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You could, could be glad when that happens. Give it a cheer. For though they don't like it, I do, says Jesus. And all of heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into that kind of trouble. I encourage you to pull out the message version of the Bible. Most Bible apps have that. And again, it's Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5. Because I think it really does give us a clearer picture. Uh, a very clear picture of today's language of what Jesus is talking about. And as you do that, I want you to pray about it. I want you to pray about what really is a blessing. To understand how that's a blessing. Because, of course, what you realize is that what Jesus is talking here about here is the real blessings that aren't found and cannot be found in this world, but are to be inherited in the world beyond. The suffering of today is the salvation of tomorrow. The blessings of today are the blessings of tomorrow. Friends, it's so good to work with you. It's so good to come alongside you. We've got a lot going on, and I do recognize that. But thank you for taking a few minutes this morning just to listen to these few words. Uh, and I just look forward to seeing you around the corridors and around the offices. God bless you, friends.